Hello. Today we are going to be traveling to Ecuador. Yes. Why Ecuador? Because we are on a trip to Terra Frutas, which is a raw, vegan, intentional community there. And today we're going to be treating you to a meal that you will not forget very soon. Welcome to Hi, everyone. Welcome. Today we are celebrating the fruits of nature and they are many and they are absolutely delicious they promote life they restore our life and they have all the elements in them and those of you who follow me on this show know the elements of what we need to replenish not calories not proteins or carbohydrates but the elements so stay right there we're going to be now going live to terra frutas in Ecuador, and we're making today. Uh, yes, Nicolaus. Thank you, Nicolaus. The famous chili of Terra Frutis. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Nicolaus. Let's see what you're doing. Okay. Oh. Hello, I'm Nicolaus, and you can see Amanda and Charlotte. Hi. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Nicolaus. Hi, Amanda. So, Tell us what we're making today. Let's see the ingredients for this chili. Okay, we're making the chili and now we're sowing the ingredients. Beautiful. And first, let's start with the first one. Is chopped tomatoes. And where are it's, they from? They're from... They're from the market in Guadalquiza, but we have some around here. We just don't have bags and bags and bags. So we have some from the market, some from here. And Amanda, okay. you will be our chef today. Yes. Second ingredient is chopped walnuts. Oh, those look so very, very full and juicy almost. Oh my goodness. They are delicious. Those are they look it. Okay. Third ingredient is chopped mushrooms. Ooh, can you bring it? We are some... What kind of mushrooms are those? those Lo are local mushrooms, and we have some that grow around here that we pick from time to time, but we weren't out in the field today, so we didn't get any. Okay, great. Thanks for that information, Amanda. Third ingredient is yellow courgettes these are courgettes yes in the united yes. states sometimes known as zucchini courgette around mm -hmm. the rest of the world these are the yellow ones lovely the thing. yellow variety that grows locally here from local producers perfect thank you fourth ingredient is chopped cauliflower rice this is to Ooh. serve with the chili that looks like real rice. That looks exactly like what rice, regular rice, steamed rice looks like. Oh my gosh. I don't think even the Japanese could tell the difference. No. Who did that job? Who who did that? That was me. I did that. Charlotte. 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 Bravo, bravo. That's gorgeous. It's some cauliflower, lemon juice, and some coriander. Can you say it again? And and how and was that in a food processor? Yes, in the food processor, just some cauliflower, lemon juice from lemons from our tree, and some coriander. What, now, now, is it coriander uh, ground up or is it real live coriander? Fresh, fresh coriander, the herb, beautiful. And do you grow it there, Terra Frutas? We do have some growing, yes. Perfect, thanks. Go ahead, Nicolaus. Next ingredient is chopped fresh onion, very now, dark green. Because very dark from our land from terra to this land this is beautiful stunningly beautifully green and dark wow it's a lot of ingredients <laughs> <laughs> celery yeah. next one we have fresh celery soaked up 
Lovely. Again, dark green. Really nice. Lovely. Green and precious. Perfect. Thank you. Goes from here. Okay, next one again, another beauty from our land is Brazilian spinach. Brazilian spinach from Terra Frutas. Lovely, you grow that there yourself. Wonderful. They're gorgeous. They're different. They look very different from the spinach in other countries. There's the Brazilian ones. Full of iron. This is a very rich uh, chili. Yeah, we're almost done. Just a couple more hours. <laughs> okay, this is chopped peppers. Bell peppers. So the the yeah they're yellow bell peppers and the red bell peppers. So the red ones are the ripest. Excellent. Thank you. Beautiful. Also chopped onion. These are purple onions. Lovely. We got a lot of people on the show who like purple onions. That's an unusual bowl. Is that a bowl from Terra Frutas as well? This is a coconut cell. A mature Beautiful. coconut. Use everything. Don't throw anything away. Wonderful. That homemade bowls. Yes. That we don't, that's just mushrooms. So we have the lemon from here. Are these spices? Okay. We have then a lemon from our land, a rough lemon. Those are huge. Tell us about the lemons there, Terra Frutas. They, are, they take so much water and they uh, become huge, giant lemons. They are huge. They're enormous. They look like an orange. Yeah. They're extra sour, so great if you're going on a cleanse. <laughs> ah. We have three That's different varieties of lemons growing here. This is the local one, and we also have the sort of standard mayo lemons that most people are familiar with, and we also have sweet lemons, which are not actually sweet, but they are not sour. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is your favorite lemon, Charlotte? Um, probably the local ones, yeah. Thank you. That's a good punch. And now we have the spices we use. We have coriander, coriander. Lovely. Great, now we can see it, thank you. Yeah. Also cumin. Do you grind your own cumin? No. But most of the other spices, yes. Yeah. So turmeric, uh, all kinds of other spices. We, we, the hot chili peppers, we have trees, we have bushes, so we grow them and then uh, dehydrate them. The dehydrator is basically always going here. That's the hot chilies. Wonderful, wow. Beautiful. From They're, our lunch. They look so plump and juicy. Yeah, that's how we replace our salt, because we try not to have salt, so we spice it with chilies or um, dried celery is salty. Excellent. Which, this is the dried celery. Yeah. Oh, can we see the, the front of it? Can we, yeah, can you open it and show us with the dried, and you dry that in the dehydrator, of course? In the dehydrator, yeah, and that replaces salt. This is a very important information. There are a lot of people who have cancer and autoimmune illnesses and that they need to get off of salt for a period of time. This is really important for them to know that this is an alternative. Thank you so much, Nikolaus. Well done. When I first came here, I followed a raw recipe that even said salt. So it was for me to learn then that just because the recipe says it, it's not something that we're going to use. And the last but not least, we have the garlic. And do you grow that there too? We do have some garlic growing, but this is from the market. So where's the, is this a farmer's market, Charlotte? Yeah, it's or a farmer's you? market. We go every Saturday. Local producers gather there and we buy a lot of uh, organic, locally grown uh, ingredients. Lovely, thank you. Okay, so, so take it away, Amanda. Let's see how you make this chili. Okay, it should be normally very quick. So we take our processor, and we put in our meat, we put in our walnuts and our mushrooms. So it's one cup of each. We put them in the processor with our dried cumin over here. And then we put it in the processor for a moment. So we don't have to be shy with the cumin. I almost don't think it's possible to use too much cumin. So it's a really nice spice. There we go. If you want to 
be willing to turn that on. I don't know. Just over there. And then everything else we're going to put in this bowl. So we'll put all the tomatoes, everything that we have. And we we'll just put yeah, this up. Okay. Now we will blend. Great job, Charlotte. It's nice to have an assistant, isn't it? <laughs> or several. <laughs> yeah, the best assistants ever. So this goes in a bowl, if you will. So, so we'll take and put it in one of the big bowls that we brought over here. Okay, so we'll put that in there, if you're willing. Thank you, thank you. And so in the big bowl, we put the tomatoes, the sweet peppers, We'll put the zucchini for those of us that are not from Europe. And we will put, we actually have, okay, we have our onion from our nice little coconut bowl. We're gonna put one little chili in. I'll cut that up so that one person doesn't eat the whole chili at one time. That would be not pleasant, I think, for most people. And then everything else will go in at the end. We'll put in our smoked paprika, some more cumin. Can't have too much cumin. And we have some dried garlic powder that we made. So we will just put that in. And then we just start it again. So let's see, here's the garlic. So what we do is we leave half of it in the bowl and then half of it we're gonna put in the food processor, which is right in front of my face. And we make it saucy. Is that, who's, who's, who decided on this? Whose favorite meal is this? Good question. We all Everybody's. Uh, yeah, consensus, <laughs> consensus making, it was not one person. Okay, there we go, if you're willing to turn that on. Yeah, easy peasy once everything's cut. Recipe says 15 minutes, more like 15 hours to chop everything up. So what, what, is, what is Charlotte doing now? She's back at the food processor. So, if somebody doesn't have a food processor, would they be able to do this themselves? They could do it in a blender. In a blender, and if not, then if they had a motor and pestle, if they had a oh, motor and pestle, you can use a stoner. You can chop. Uh, who's the ingredients? If you don't have a yes. Food that's processor. the motor and pestle. That's the motor and pestle exactly, Nikolaus. That's a nice one. That's a big one. Yes, it's, it's great. When we don't have electricity, we use that uh, to enrich our lives. <laughs> Does that hap happen often that you don't have electricity? Yes, we're oh. a few weeks ago. We do is we all just come in the kitchen and watch who's ever made. So we're losing the audio for some reason, and we also just um it just froze on us but now we're back great oh we're freezing again I give an example of what it's like without electricity no, the <laughs> okay okay hello yes we're here we're here but you're not you have been freezing and we're losing your audio sometimes which didn't happen during the rehearsals but this is what happens when we have technology that's not yet up to par. Go ahead, keep going. So the very last step is you add the meat, the only real meat there is, to the rest of it, and then you just mix it up. You can also make like a coconut sour cream to go on it. We cut up some fresh cilantro to put on top. 
top. You can put it on top of this. You can make a wrap in these cute little leaves that can be used for a wrap. Or we can chop the spinach and put spinach in it. And there you go. The chili. So if you want to. Okay, so we're breaking up again and we're losing again. Oh, there we go. So that's, that's the, final, the, chili, product. the final product. Oh, yes. this is gorgeous. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, is this a spicy, a mild mm -hmm. one? Or this what, we what like have, it spicy. Have, people at Terra Frutas like it spicy. Amanda, can you hear me? I think you're saying it they want it spicy there. This is very interesting because we are actually losing. Uh, Michael Landfill says, hello, everyone. Uh, hi, Michael. Welcome. Because we are losing the photo, both the image and the reception and your voices. So this is a photograph, what you're seeing right now, of the actual chili that was just made for us at Terra Frutas. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all a short video of Terra Frutas and what it's So this is Terra Frutas and this is exactly the way that you will see it when you go there and you arrive at Terra Frutas. So that video was just to show you what it's like and I'm going to show you some photographs now of Terra Frutas. So these are some of the buildings there you can see a mountain to the left in the background there because this is Ecuador remember and then we also have here a photograph of Terra Frutas with the rainbow because of course this is near the Amazon so of course we're going to be finding um, rain and we're going to be finding of course the beautiful rainbow that we're seeing here and this is the when you come to the property they have a lot of uh, places that you can go to. The first person that you will be introduced to. Great. So we, when you go there first, you get to go to the reception and then they have a community hall. And of course we were in the kitchen for this actual demo. But when we're in the kitchen, it's very close to the community hall. So it's not, everything is pretty close to each other. We hopefully will be able to go to one of the residents and show all the different sleeping accommodations that they have there. Some people actually have platforms that sleep on the trees and then. So while we're looking at this, I am just putting up some of the comments that are coming in from the audience who are, who are watching. And Rachel, hi, Rachel, welcome. She seems to like the rainbow very much. And what I'm going to do now is I am actually going to be showing you the fruits that I think you will be really glad to watch and to see because this is what you get when you decide to go raw and especially those of you fruitarian you know this very well that you will be eating fruits like this the locusts and then of course the bananas very different kinds of bananas you'll be eating of course a lot of citrus but tremendously this is what I, my favorite fruit is the sherry moya and this is most people's favorite fruit by the way and of course Oh, I wish we had smelly vision. You could smell the beautiful, beautiful mangoes that we have that we will soon be, everybody will be enjoying who are in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you've been enjoying that this entire time. Here we have another mango. So this is more or less what a raw vegan eats in a day. Uh, some people eat even more than this. 
I find that this is a lot for me to eat because I also do green juices as well. I do a lot of juices. I'm a juice queen. I just love doing juices. And so I mix this with, of course, all the different melons in the summer. Right now it's spring in the Northern Hemisphere. And so this is what most raw vegans are eating right now because these are really what are in season at the moment. So next week, when you come on next week, I'm going to be showing you how to make some amazing salads. You know, one of the problems with the with everyone who eats, and I found especially North America's people don't know how to make really nutritious, highly delicious salads. So next week on next week's show, I'll be showing you how to make some salads that will really inspire you to get into the kitchen and start making salads as a meal, as a very nutritious, healthy, and satisfying meal. So we're going to be using many different things. Now, a lot of people think, oh, but I use fruits for dessert. Why are you showing me fruits as a meal? Because you cannot digest fruits if you've been eating starches or greens, especially if you've been eating well, some fruit goes with greens, actually. But if you've been eating a lot of heavy protein, do not ever add fruit. Do not eat fruit as dessert ever, 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 because they will simply putrefy the stomach because all fruit, all fruit and starches are digested in the mouth. We have what's called tylin. It's, a, it's a, in the saliva. It's the enzyme that digests the fruit. This gets digested there. This gets digested there. This gets digested there. And of course, the, the sugar that's in starches also gets digested there. But you cannot expect to find the same digestion that happens in the mouth in the rest of the body. You, you, there's no other place in the body where fruit can get digested. So if you are eating a lot of proteins, heavy protein, especially if you're still eating um, animal protein, and it goes into your, and you've eaten that, and then you decide to put fruit as a dessert, what you're doing is you're stopping the digestion of the protein in the stomach, because the stomach has specific acids, stomach acids and hydrochloric acid specifically, most people actually do not have enough hydrochloric acid. And anyone who's sick, sick or has any kind of digestive disorders, such as acid reflux, especially acid reflux, you means it means that your hydrochloric acid in your stomach is extremely depleted. And one of the things that you now need to do is to restore it. Is you, you can't really take something, you know, to restore it. The only way to do that is to start switching to fruits by themselves start eating what's called a mono diet, mono fruits. So you start out maybe with just mangoes and you eat a lot of mangoes, like a lot, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these mangoes at one meal, just one meal. And then you go on to something else that you can eat by itself as well. Or you just eat all bananas. A lot of people love, to, especially men, I find, love to eat a lot of bananas as their mono fruit. And then you give your digestive system a chance to recover. That is how we recover and give our digestive system a chance to really get some kind of rest and relaxation so that it will be completely and totally restored. Do not force your body to digest, digest something if your en enzymes are too low. The beauty about eating this way is that the food has its own enzymes. So it is di it, you don't have to worry about how is the food getting digested. It already has the enzyme in intact. So you can eat five, six, 10, eight cherry moyas. Just make sure that they're very, very ripe. The riper the cherry moyas, is actually the sweeter that they are. So do not feel afraid to eat like six, seven, eight, ten cherry moyas at once. If you want it, go for it, but just eat them by themselves. Now, what if you want to eat some cherry moyas, one mango, maybe some other fruit? Yes, of course you can do that, but only once your, your digestive system is restored would I recommend it. Make sure that you restore the digestive tract first. Most people have digestive issues and don't even realize it. They think, oh, I've got knee pain. I've got knee problems. I have got an earache that keeps coming up. I have got 
uh, leukemia. I have got a uh, skin rash. You have a digestive disorder. It all starts in the gut. And so the most important thing is to restore your body's digestive system by eating a plentiful amount of the easiest foods to digest, which are the fruits. Now, what about greens? Yes, greens are critical. Greens are very important. The green that has the most protein and has all the protein, has all the amino acids intact, is moringa. It's a tiny leaf, and it's can be it can be actually ground into powder form. I use it in powder form, so I have it all day long. You can also use this. This is very important to have. This is spirulina. Now, be careful when you eat spirulina. You've got to make sure that it is in waters that are not tox polluted. So this particular spirulina is the one that I usually recommend, the Blue Magic one, because this is really pure, really clean, and it's from the Klamath Lakes in Oregon in the United States. And they really make sure that each and every one is just completely clean, and you will get as much of the nutrients as you can from it. So, yes, the Lukats. Let me bring up the big Lukats. Here they are. Somebody just put, say, rare to see these big ones. Yes, I actually got them today from the farmer's market. Very unusual to get them. I, you have to know who the farmers are. I actually go to a farmer from Mexico um, that grows them, and this is how I'm able to get them. Once you taste these and you try them, if they're ripe, you're going to fall in love with them and wonder why you've never eaten them ever before. This is very, very interesting to find. Any place you find them, make sure you get them right away. Hello, Tom. I see that Tom is here with us today. And Tom, you missed uh, the part where they were making the chili. Unfortunately, we lost the reception. We're waiting for them to be able to reconnect again from Terra Frutas. But I was showing also the photographs from there. So I will show it again. So this is what it looks like when you first get there. This is the first person you'll see is Charlotte, who was on the screen before. We're waiting for her to try to connect. We we've lost the actual um, video footage. We I'll show you video footage, but we've actually lost our internet connection with them. So we're waiting to restore it. And this is what you must have missed, those of you who are just joining now. This also is Terra Frutas in Ecuador. Now, they're the ones who put on the Amazon Fruit Festival which I thoroughly recommend that you think about probably going now. I'm also going to show you a video of the land there. So as you can see that vid through that video, it's very tropical. And this is in Ecuador, extremely tropical. I'm going to put up some more comments now. Um, thank you, Thomas, for watching on YouTube. Welcome. And I would love to, those of you who are watching right now to let me know what your favorite fruit is and why. Why is it? Why am I recommending that you do fruits and that you use fruits? This is a good question that you all need to think about. Why are we recommending fruits first? When you are healing or you're on a healing diet, why fruits? There is a very good reason for this. And one of the reasons actually that I really believe that you should be eating fruits is because fruits have all the water intact. They have so much moisture in them. This, for example, is an heirloom tomato, which are coming into season right now in the Northern Hemisphere. And I strongly recommend that you start eating fruits by themselves or only with greens, green leafy vegetables, it's because they are a great combination with green leafy vegetables if you're going to be eating fruits at all and mixing it with anything else. That's what I recommend. So that is very important. Now, in my book, this uh, celebrating raw or raw nature. I give you recipes in there, but you'll see that I only use four to five ingredients at a time. And I make sure that they all are proper food combining. We're talking about proper food combining where you get all of the nutrients intact and you do not have to think about what it is that you're losing as a nutrient. So Tom is asking, 
do I recommend tomatoes? A lot of Ayurvedic medicine says to avoid nightshades. It all depends on the person, it depends on your health. A person that's very healthy will not have a problem at all with nightshades, at all, ever. The prob if you have a problem with nightshades, it's because you need to start detoxing and healing the body. If you want to detox and you want to know what's the quickest and easiest way to detox, but the most delicious way, go to my website and you can actually be able to download one of the programs there that suits you for detoxing. So for example, with one of the programs, you will find that you will can only you can just do two days two days you detox your body with just clean simple raw foods but very tasty and then the other time you can actually make sure that you want to go a little further that we have leaning into raw and then we have raw in the afternoons where you go to your friends and you visit them and you are with them during the day and you take you have brunch with them you've got breakfast with them but for the rest of the day you're raw i also have a new show coming up called the climate healers food show we're launching that in march and that one is on dr S uh, salish rao's website uh which is the climate healers and this will be the climate healers food show where we're going to showing you the connection between the food and the climate and why this is so important so I know that some of you are saying, I've been raw for quite a while and I'm still having some problems and I'm still having some issues. You might want to look at food combining. You might want to think about changing your diet to suit the seasons. You might want to start eating seasonally. But if that's still not working, you might have to look at your relationship with food and see how you relate to food and the food supply. And that's what you're learning when you go to this site and you download one of the Elegantly Raw Opportunities, you're learning how to change your relationship with food so that you're no longer having the same issues that you've always had all your life around food or with food, whether you're addicted to food or you always have an upset stomach or you get chronic headaches. That's what's really important is looking at the reasons behind it. No food can do for you what you're not willing to do for yourself. So first you've got to change your relationship with yourself in order to change your relationship with food. And once you do that, you find, oh my gosh, it is so amazing that all of a sudden all these issues are healed and the cancer is no longer there. And now I'm not saying that this is going to be true for everyone, but for some people, that's what they find. So yes, one of the things that I think should be done is that people need to start from scratch. just like when they were babies and the first thing they were able to eat was fruit. Start always with the fruit. So Tom is saying, yes, it's a good idea to detox and go vegan is essential for good health. You know, when you start eating plants, you begin to realize that it's something that really works well with the body. It works really, really well. Do not mix the fruit and the nuts, but it's important to harvest fruits and nuts from the Amazon because people are so people don't destroy it. Yes, I agree with this comment uh, from Tom. And you need to realize that certain things don't mix together. Why do fruits and nuts not mix? F nuts are high in fat, very high in fat. And yet we have these so-called energy bars, and then we have these um, fruit and nut medleys that people are encouraged to eat because they say it's very, very uh, healthy. But you cannot be mixing both. You know, the body has enzymes and the enzymes know only to digest the fruit. Real food, raw foods has the enzyme that it needs to digest that particular food intact within the fruit. But when we cook food, we lose a lot of the enzymes. And therein lies the issue between eating cooked food for a meal and then eating fruit for dessert, fresh fruits for dessert. You cannot mix them both because when you cook the meal, you've lost all the enzymes to digest the food, or at least most of them, unless you just steam it or you do it in a way that you do not lose most of it. And that's really, really important. So Thomas is saying my favorite is ripe mangoes from, he has his own tree. Oh, this is wonderful, Thomas. You're so fortunate to have mango trees. Oh, I wish I did. I wish I did. I bought these from the farmer's market. And I'm so glad that they have them there because for me, 
I want things directly from the farm. I don't want anyone selling me things that have been third hand third hand or has been passed from hand to hand and from person to person because we're eating energy. This is energies and people's energies are on the food that you eat. Anybody who touched it, you know that their energy is on it. Anybody who spat on the ground, you know that their energy is on it. Anyone who defecated there like an animal, that's their fertilizer, their energy is there. We're eating all of this energy constantly. We're eating the energy of everyone who passed by. If somebody just murdered somebody and threw the body there, that's the energy we're eating. If somebody was happy and was rushing through the fields in a happy mood and skipping through the fields, that's the energy that you're eating. And that's why it's important to grow your own food. And that is why I have had in the past, you'll see some of them on this show, I teach you how to ferment your foods and how to sprout. And I'm going to be teaching how to grow your own microgreens shortly because that you can do in your home, inside the, the apartment, inside the house. You do not need to be outdoors for it. And sprouting, of course, it's totally indoors. You don't even need soil for it. Look at these shows that I've done already about, about sprouting. And Marie is coming back from Toronto, Sprouts in Canada, to have an entire masterclass on sprouting. And that will probably be two full shows of how to sprout. And then I will teach you recipes on how to use the sprouts as well. So we're finished for today. They have not been able to come back on. We'll bring them back on another time. You know, when we did the rehearsal on Monday, the actual internet worked all the time. But today it didn't work all the time. So we will bring on two to Ah, Taro Frutas back again, and I'm glad that we were able to visit them. Even for the short time, you got to learn how to make that delicious, most intoxicating chili. Let me know if you've made it and how you feel about it. I hope you'll go to my website and you'll start doing some of the detox there, and you let me know how you are doing, because it is my own goal is to constantly help people to feel more alive, to feel more vibrant, and to feel empowered. So next week, I'll be teaching you how to make some really incredible salads as of next week. And then I have some chefs coming on in um, in May, which is coming up next month. So please tune in. And until I see you next week, be bold, be mindful, and eat a lot of fruits as close to the tree as you possibly can. Bye, everyone. <laughs>